Hey there, I'm Kendra from KendraPerry.net, and I'm wondering, are you wondering how to interpret the H. pylori with all those virulence factors on the GI map? So in this video, I'm gonna break down how to read a positive H. pylori result on the GI map and how to interpret the various virulence factors. For functional health training and all the nerdy ins and outs of functional lab testing, plus online marketing business strategies to get you in front of more clients, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a video every Thursday. So H. pylori is an incredibly common infection. And in my opinion, it is one of the worst infections that will come up on the GI map test in your patients. It also is an infection that I see mishandled by many cl uh, clinicians. By the end of this video, you will understand at what point in your protocol you should be addressing a positive H. pylori infection, plus what do those virulence factors actually mean and what do they mean for your client? So GI map, is my jam. I've seen hundreds of these tests in clients and I've mentored dozens of practitioners. Uh, so looking at these tests is a total breeze and I can absolutely help you feel like an expert with this very important test. Okay, so what is H. pylori actually? So H. pylori is a bacteria and it does infect the stomach and it's spiral shaped, which actually gives it the, gives it the ability to burrow into the lining of the stomach. And typically you would wanna have a very acidic stomach environment because that acidity is what allows people to break down protein and denature it, but also absorb and digest minerals. And what H. pylori actually does is it changes the environment of the stomach from acidic to alkaline. So this is a big issue because all of a sudden you have a very hard time breaking down protein, which can lead to neurotransmitter imbalances, blood sugar issues, uh, issues with weight, issues building muscle and repairing tissue. And on top of that, it makes it very hard to absorb and utilize minerals. So this is a big deal because minerals are so important. They are the spark plugs of the body. So if you aren't absorbing your minerals, um, you can end up with a lot of different issues. Okay, so now that you understand what is H. pylori, you might be wondering about all those virulence factors that sit underneath H. pylori. So basically, to kind of simplify it as much as possible, those virulence factors just refer to how aggressive and how opportunistic and maybe how stubborn that various H. pylori infection is in your patient. So if your client has H. pylori with no virulence factors, hopefully it's going to be a little bit easier to get rid of versus your client who is H. pylori with one or several or more of the virulence factors. It just means that they have a more aggressive, more opportunistic um, infection. They might need a longer H. pylori protocol. Um, they might need a few different products added to the protocol to make sure they actually get rid of it. These are the people who tend to have a harder time actually eliminating that infection. And if you want all the details about each of the specific virulence factors and what they actually mean and what they're associated with, you can just subscribe to my GI map cheat sheet for practitioner, where I actually give you all the information on each of these various, uh, various virulence factors. Okay guys, so let's do a little quiz. Comment below and let me know in this situation, would you actually treat for H. pylori? So let's say your client has H. pylori, it's registering, but it's below the lab reference range. So it's not getting flagged as high and there's zero virulence factors. Would you still address this infection and put them on a protocol for H. pylori? So I'll let you know the answer to this question at the end of this video. Okay, so now you know what H. pylori is, what is the meaning of the virulence factors, and you might be wondering, okay, so what is an effective length for an H. pylori protocol? And I've seen um, a lot of different opinions on this, but clinically what I've seen to work best is actually a 60-day protocol um, using something like DGL, which is the deglycerized version of licorice, something like mastic gum, and maybe even metula tea, but you want to do it for at least 60, day, 60 days and sometimes longer if that person has a lot of virulence factors. So when it comes to creating protocols for my clients who run GI map results, I actually prioritize H. pylori above all other infections with the exception of Entamoeba histolytica. Now Entamoeba histolytica is on page one of the GI map. If you want more information on that section of the GI map, just check out my video titled page one of the GI map to get those details. 
Okay, so now that you get the basics of a positive H. pylori result on the GI map, you might be wondering, well, what the heck do I do with the rest of the panel? So you can grab my 16 page GI map cheat sheet for practitioners, um, which is super juicy and will give you all the information on the rest of the markers on this panel. And if you want that, you can just click the link below to grab that. Okay guys, so let's talk about the answer to the quiz. So if you have an H. pylori infection or result on your client's panel, it's not getting flagged as high because it's below the lab reference range and they have no virulence factors, do you address it? I'm going to say yes. There is some information out there that says an H. pylori um, can actually be beneficial, but if your client is coming to you, there's a good chance they have GI symptoms, they're not doing well. So I would still address it because just because it's not getting flagged on the GI map is only looking at one day. And remember, we're only we're always looking at a snapshot of a moving target. So who's to say that on a different day that your client would take this test that it wouldn't come up as high? And of course, we don't wanna give it the opportunity to become high. So if you like this video, please let me know by liking it, subscribe to my channel, and please share it with your fellow health nerds and comment below and let me know how this video helped you. I'll see you guys in the next video.